When I started uh, working as a scientist 30 years ago, childhood leukemia was a universally fatal disease. It's now a completely curable disease. By understanding the disease, we develop better treatments and we can go from something with 100% mortality to a 98% survival. Cancer Research UK is the world's largest cancer research charity. So what can you do with £400 million? You can have an enormous impact. CI UK has its, uh, its institutions, its research institutes, but they're embedded in university environments. Cancer Research UK also funds direct science in the university laboratories, which is curiosity-driven scientists devoted to cancer research. The key problem that my lab has been working on is a specific form of the way DNA is damaged, when the DNA is glued together, and it's called a crosslink. Crosslinks are caused by many cancer chemotherapeutic drugs. Obviously, you and I can't have evolved a very complex system to remove these crosslinks in our DNA in the eventuality that we're going to have chemotherapy. So there must have been something fundamental that's produced in us that caused these crosslinks. The discovery that I'm most proud of is realizing the human body produces a lot of formalin, which is a preservative. For almost 50 years, we thought that formalin was a toxin that we were exposed from the outside. And a lot of legislation and policy making was orientated about how you limit the exposure to formalin. Our work shows that that exposure is irrelevant to what's within your own body. As you remove the formalin, you convert it into a building block that paradoxically goes on to make DNA. So formalin is an intrinsic component of life. If you don't fix the damage, then a cancer develops very quickly. So therefore, you need to have mechanisms that fix all that damage. In the last four years, we've seen a convergence of transformative technologies. First of all, the ability to sequence DNA at scale and at low cost rapidly. The second is to manipulate the code of DNA precisely through CRISPR-Cas technology. The third is the ability to see the shape of proteins that do all the things in our body. I see two or three important things that might happen in the future. The first, we will have a much better idea of how a cancer cell's instruction is fundamentally altered compared to a normal cell. A cancer is a bit like a self-parasite because it's your own cell that's gone rogue which then invade, invades and colonizes you. But the principles of how it does this is, not, is still mysterious. So I, I think we will understand much better. And with this knowledge, we will have new treatments. It may turn out that a cancer evolves in each individual host in a unique way we would have to understand the evolution of that particular cancer in us in an individual basis and then to treat it on an individual basis. And this is the origin of personalized medicine. Oxford's philosophy is very orientated towards the human condition. You can find an expert anywhere in an obscure branch that might relate to your very small obscure world. And that synergy can create new ways to look at what you're studying. It's a stunningly beautiful place to do research. Its backdrop is, is breathtaking. And I think when you bring all that together, you do have a unique and magical place to do what we do.